Good evening, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Tonight, I have the pleasure to have once again, for the second time, a good friend of mine from the Central Bank, the Cam National Bank of Cambodia, uh, Madame Chia Serei. Uh, Serei, welcome back to, to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Serei was invited to come last year to share with us a bit on the development of uh, you know, the banking sector and uh, the emergence of uh, the first ever institution relating to the credit bureau. So it's almost a year already. So now I thought it'd be good to invite her back and probably continue the debate what we start uh, last year. So uh, Sarai will come back again and uh, tell me, uh, perhaps uh, for those who missed your first show, uh, y you should say a bit about your background a bit. Well, I, I have joined the uh, National Bank of Cambodia since 1999, so it's been a while now. Um, my education background, I have done my middle and high school in France, um, so I speak French. And I did my university degrees um, in New Zealand, Australia and the UK. So it's uh, quite a variety of uh, countries that I uh, have been living in. Um, so, uh, so you're quite I exposed to uh, this, uh, the Western world, if, if I could say, you know, I think we share similar backgrounds, uh, French speaking, but of course we have a background with France, uh, but uh, the, the ASEAN world is moving us uh, toward a more English speaking country. But uh, so, so in the banking sector now, uh, we see a thriving banking sector, right? But before we get to that, uh, I thought that it would be good if you can refresh us a bit. You know, last year you mentioned that you're about to help start the, the Credit Bureau of Cambodia. Where are we now? Well, it's been a year now and the uh, Credit Bureau has been uh, launched uh, last year. And last two months we have celebrated the first anniversary of the Credit Bureau. Um, and it has been very exciting. The um, the the, the, the results that we see from this lounge. Um, I think now banks can um, access the credit histories of their clients uh, easier. Yes. And um, we have seen as a result, uh, for instance, because at the moment we don't have the commercial uh, data, all we have is the individual okay. data. So the impact is more on the microfinance institutions. Um, we have realized with the credit bureau um, that um, we have um, PayPal now that has multiple borrowings okay. uh, that the, the institution were not aware uh, before without the bureau. And I think this is very important to, um, to try to minimize the issue of over indebtedness and uh, definitely we don't want to see something like uh, India, um, I think about two or three years ago happened in Cambodia. Oh, I see. What, what do you yeah. mean by that? Well, what happened is um, in India is there's a lot of microfinance that were flourishing and they're charging very high interest rate and um, the people that borrow were not able to repay okay. uh, the microfinance. Yes. So what happened is they end up uh, either by uh, killing themselves and then really? um, there's a lot of burden on the families going forward. There's a lot of social unrest uh, as a result. Uh, so this is one issue that the, the, um, the international communities has uh, uh, put a lot of focus on um, the issue of over indebtedness I and see. that could um, spill over into uh, uh, social unrest. Social issue. So, so you're saying that with the credit bureau, you know, banks or microfinance are able to say, okay, whether they should lend to that person or not, uh, before they have no idea whether that person is borrowing from any place, right? Are you saying that? Well, um, it's an additional information for bank to get to know their okay. client better. Um, I think Cambodia lack a lot of, um, I'll say, transparency in terms of doing business. Okay. So um, people who usually do business don't have proper bookkeeping. Okay. And they want to go to the bank and get a loan. The yes. problem is when you have nothing to show about your incomes, your expenses, 
um, the bank would have no idea. And even if you produce one, um, it's not something that is really reliable from the bank perspective. So now what the bank is trying to do is more to understand what is your behavior mm. as a borrower, uh, whether you are somebody who uh, um, who has who always has the willingness mm. to pay even though you don't have money who's always come to pay on time um, so that is some the, the what the credit bureau is giving is the behavior of yes. the, the borrowers I, I read a World Bank report uh, it say that Cambodia uh, ranking have moved up you yes. know, in the world mainly due to this uh, establishment of credit bureau this transparency issue so so the effect on the economy is felt yet still at the micro level right do you see eventually that effect filtering up or moving up you know to the the, the, the macro level at least to the commercial level once the commercial uh, information is on it will be uh, the the effect can be uh, much more than uh, than what we see now um, I think what we are trying to do is to um, allow bank to lend more to the industries or to the companies that are credit worthy, um, not merely uh, relying on the collaterals. Okay. Um, what happened in Cambodia, Cambodia now is 95% of the banking loans are secured by lands yes. and properties. Now all the businesses, not all businesses has land and property mm -hmm. to pledge mm -hmm. to the bank, but some of them might have a very good uh, a receivable, yes. a, a good uh, financial statement that they can um, uh, tap on. So uh, with the credit bureau, it's an additional uh, layers of, uh, of um, 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 securities to the bank Yes. to to lend to these uh, industries well, well sir you know you you mentioned about financing to industry this is important as you know we in a few years from now uh, Cambodia will will be moving up from the least developed country status to at least a low middle income and uh, like the your prime minister in uh, two years ago uh, at the fourth uh, Cambodia economic forum he has already set the stage that where he want to see Cambodia, you know, a few years from now. And last couple of years, we see already many FDI entering to the country, uh, a lot of joint venture, a lot of merger acquisition, a lot of Cambodian company are growing up also. Yeah. So you, you see the uh, banking sector, you know, uh, be in position to, to move, I wouldn't say completely away from collateral banking, but to move more and more toward merit-based uh, business, you know, yeah. uh, based uh, lending? Well, the, the banking sector is very important in any economy, you know, it's in a simple word, it's whatever you do, you need money. Yes. Now, to me, I would say the banking sector is, um, if you compare the whole economy as a, a human body, the banking sector is like the heart where it's pumping blood yes. into every uh, organs. That's a good of, metaphor. Yes. Um, so we need a strong banking sector in order to support any economic development. Um, what I see now is the banking sector in Cambodia is, it, we are now at a very exciting moment. Okay. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, interest from uh, foreign, uh, uh, well reputed bank mm -hmm. who want to uh, to come and invest into the country because they see these potentials now going forward as the economy grows our bank need also grow uh, with it um, capital wise I think now that we have access to banks like uh, Bank of China yes. and ICBC which are two of the biggest bank in the world in, in terms of market capitalizations um, I think have accessing the financing uh, wouldn't be an issue. Yes. The problem now is how the client, how, how our industry mm. um, can go and access. The money is there, yes. but how can you touch that exactly. money? This is the problem. And I mean, strengthening transparencies is, is very important. This is yes. what banks need. Uh, the other issue, there's also a lot of, um, what I, I heard from the bank is um, the legal system. Yeah, legal system. The yes. um, 
enforcement of the contract mm. and, 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 and the foreclosure of properties yes. is very difficult mm. and, and take a long time in Cambodia right now. Yeah. Um, so something needs to be done as we, we move forward and we want to grow the economies and, and yes. this is the basic uh, things that need to we need to build on. Well, y you know, I would say that I concur with you on the last statement, you know, very much in the sense that you know, capital is very shy, as you know, you know, it is like a fish who like to swim to a pond where the water is cool. Right? Uh, capital don't like hot water. Uh, and in, in that sense, you know, having uh, a country that respects the sanctity of contract, when you have problem with your shareholder, you know, with the, uh, your creditor or your borrower, you don't know who's right, who's wrong, right? But you got to be able to count on the legal system. Yes. So in that sense, I concur with you. But having an upstream uh, credit bureau to give advanced information also help bank decide whether that person, that borrower, is also worthy to be to lend the money also. Well, yeah, we, we should bear in mind, um, I, and I'm speaking from the perspective of regulators, yes. um, is that the credit bureau is one of the tools to mitigate the risk, yes. but it is not the tool. Yes. So the credit, the information on the credit bureau alone should not give 100% uh, comfort to the yes. bank and, yes. and, and for them and to the go And the second one? Um, there is a lot of tools that need to look that, that the banks need to look at. Um, one is the behavior. Yes. What this is what the credit bureau is giving is the behavior of their mm. client. But banks need also look at the um, the potential of the business, whether yes. it's worthwhile to yes. finance it, mm. and and as such, you will look at the the overall economic environment, the sectoral mm. uh, environment, the competitiveness, yes. and and also the the ability of the business to generate enough cash flow mm. to repay I the see. bank. Business uh, Cambodia is a thriving entrepreneurial uh, country now. You see everywhere. Uh, all these new shop popping up every street everybody is transacting mm -hmm. right this is this is probably the uh, the strength that I see in a uh, local economy is is the micro enterprise you know you go to some other country you you, you can feel the certain lethargy you know you you, you don't feel the the things are moving here you, you get off yeah. the plane people feel from the airport yes. all the way to downtown uh, people are transacting people are doing business uh, what I'm trying to say here is that you see the last several years the emergence of Cambodian entrepreneur moving from a mom and pop, a single individual, a husband and wife, moving up to a corporate ladder. A um, stock market, of course, is young, but do, do you see the banking sector uh, looking more to this uh, group of young entrepreneur enterprise growing up? as a source of growth for them? Definitely they do and I, I, I completely agree with you the fact that Cambodia as, as a people are very entrepreneurial. If you go to the provincial area, um, in the smaller towns you will see people were putting their fruit, a couple of fruit in front of their house and sell it and as an income, uh, I mean they can, the income that they get from selling those fruit they yes. can feed the, the families. So, yeah. Now the mango so, season now. So th there are the spirit of entrepreneurship yes. already yes. At, at any level. Microfinance are financing these people mm. so that they can build on their business. And I have heard uh, stories about, um, from a microfinance about a girl who was leaving, who, who, who was an orphan and was mm. leaving with a grandfather. Mm. And so this microfinance went and see the girl and say, look, I see you. I probably know that you don't have the ability to repay me, but because I feel that you are a good granddaughter, you're taking care of you. I'll give you a hundred thousand real mm. to start business selling the grilled banana in front of your house. Oh. So she said, well, with gratitude, of course, she took the money and she sell the grilled banana. After a couple of months, she decided that the banana that she bought from the market to dry and grill is too expensive. Okay. So she decided to ride her own bicycle to the farm where they grow banana and transport right. it back herself. So the price was cheaper. And instead of just bringing the banana enough for her business, she's also retail it Supplying. to the market, supply okay. it to, to other people in the markets. So the she's making, price. yes, of course, and she's making money. 
And I think after a while, she ended up borrowing about a million real from the from the microfinance, okay. and her business is growing. And I think this is a very good example of how a bank or microfinance can help business grow. Yes. Uh, you you need to give them a chance. Yes. Um, you need to believe in it. I I I take the next step, right? I mean, in a few years down the road, you know, uh, a lot of people like her will be moving up, you know, as they get settled. But Currently, what I see throughout Cambodia now, at least in a big city, you see a new trend coming in fast, which is the franchising of food services, right? You know, many coffee shop, many uh, uh, food retail, you know, and all these are what I call the middle class uh, entrepreneur who are about to, uh, I, I would say they, they left already the, the entrepreneur sector, they moved to a corporate sector, yes. because in a franchise you have to have a strong thing. Um, what I see in the future is that if the bank, if our bank in the sector, which I now we have a lot of banks now and they're looking for clients, if they are in a position to give good, commercially viable, good rate to, to this uh, entrepreneur, you, you can see the, the Cambodian uh, economy grow quite and by leaps and bounds. Yes, um, it's. Um I think this franchising can work and uh, the bank would understand the market before they um, venture into all this. We have a fairly young population and all these fast food and yes. coffees is, is really a uh, trendy thing to be at. Banks understand this. Yes. So um, I think they will finance what they feel is, is, um, is good. Yeah, I, you, you know, I, for, for me, maybe you can uh, depict a little bit uh, about the, the, the commercial banking sector. I, some people say, oh, but uh, Cambodia as a small country can it absorb so many commercial banks, but banks make their own decision. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, wh wh what do you think? Um, I think this is like an open race and every country has to go through a certain fa uh, phases. Yeah. Um, it happened in Malaysia, it happened in Singapore, one of the biggest financial centers in the world where you have a lot of smaller banks. At the yeah. end of the day, I, was, I, I always like to say this, the big fish will always eat the smaller one. At the end of the day, they will find a way to consolidate yes. themselves yes. and become strong. Now, whether Cambodia is in a position, whether the National Bank of Cambodia is in a position to say Cambodia need 10 banks, 5 banks, hmm. no one knows. Yes. What we can do is we allow whoever eligible to come yeah. in and let them compete. And yes. as we, we can see now, um, we have seen some mergers going on. Uh, mm. it, it's, it's, it's slow, but it's taking on. Yes. But we have to go th through that phase and yes. the best win. Mm. Well, I, and I think in the end of the day, competition is good. You know, competition uh, is good. I think at the moment we have about 37 something banks. Mm. Um, the thing also is that a lot of banks, they're trying to cater their own niche yes. market. They're not really serving the, the, every segment of the economy. Yes. And I would say only about five to six banks uh, are doing the job. Yes, um, are, are the doing rest, the overall banking service, Yes, right? I think the rest, they really try to cater. I mean, um, certain banks from, from Taiwan, for instance, yeah. they're more looking into uh, investors from Taiwan yes, because yes. there's somebody that they know already exactly. from exactly. Their, their country. Yes. So in that sense, in reality, we only have about six, seven banks competing with each okay. other. Okay. With that competition going on, we have seen now a decline in interest rate um, loan on loans. Um, we have seen it was, it used to be 16% five years ago. You're kidding me. Down, yeah, it, and it came down to 14, 12%, and now we're standing at somewhere between 10, 9%. Oh, that's a good news then. That's yeah, a good it's, news. It's, so it's, that's what competition yeah. is yeah. supposed to be. We wouldn't otherwise have seen that yes. uh, if, yeah. we, if the central bank would say, I like to have five banks and that's it. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah. you yeah. would have sort of an oligopoly. But um, Going forward, the market will decide itself, yes. uh, and I think we're in a market economy, yes. and we, we should let them decide. You, you mentioned something quite interesting that probably not many people will re realize, that you know, in a, uh, in, in a country like Cambodia, where we're so uh, relying on export, meaning that if, you, if the, our market is small, our consumer market, mm -hmm. even though it's growing, it's still small in relative term, right? 
So we're dependent on export market, and export market is dependent on industrialization. Yes. Industrialization rely on FDI, and guess what you mentioned about the Taiwanese, for example, uh, they come to invest in industry, and then they want to deal with banks who knows them. Yes. And what we see at the same time that the Japanese are coming, and they like to have banks yeah, that they yeah. comfortable with. You know, the Thai would want to deal with the Thai, the yes. Malaysian. So in a way, it's competition per se, but on the other hand, it's more a niche market servicing. Yes. It's quite yeah. interesting, quite interesting. Never thought about that. Um, well, it, it, it is the, uh, the, the realities. Yes. And uh, I've been in the industries for a very long time to understand yes. uh, uh, so I, I want, uh, it's not your direct field, but there is a sure correlation between the work of the central bank and the stock market because the, these are the two things that bring capital uh, to the country, right? Yes. Where do you see the relationship between, uh, you know, the banking sector as a direct capital, you know, uh, injection to the economy and, and the role of the SEC? Where you know, it's a stock market, where, where is it going and how do you see the bank supporting, you know, the, the growth of the capital market? Um, these two sectors are complementing each other, mm -hmm. um, if not competing yes. for each other. Now, um, it's all depend on, uh, in some countries it's depend on the tax laws, yes. on, on the um, investor protections rules, people would rather move to the stock market to um, raise capital mm -hmm. rather than go to the banking sector yes. and borrow money. Yes. So um, it's the same, but one is raise capital and you pay dividend, the other one is you borrow money and you pay interest. Yes. Um, At the end of the day, you still need capital somehow. Yes, but, but, but um, when you raise capital from the public, there is a lot of rules that you have to implement. Um, with the bank, of course, there are rules, there are some rules of transparencies, but then again, with an additional collateral, with yes. some other things, you can get away with it. Going